All right guys, I'm here today in Los Angeles at Box and Burn Gym and we're talking about the three most common mistakes that I see with the cross, right? Powerful punch, this should be probably your strongest punch. So common mistake number one is no core rotation. Not using the core and the hips to generate the power in the punch. Why is that bad? Well, it's not gonna get power, right? If we just throw it as an arm punch, so we don't rotate the core, listen to the sound of the punch and listen out for the power, right? It's just an arm punch. Now if he uses the foot, turns, swivels the foot with the punch, that allows the core and hip to get involved and it allows the shoulder to come right through the shot as well. It allows him to get more range on the shot. But most importantly, like I just mentioned, it allows him to use that whole right side of his body and really transfer that weight through the punch, right? So rotate everything and go right through. <laughs> He's straight away, it's louder, right? Again, <laughs> good again. Nice, good. So core rotation is probably the most common thing we see. We see the shoulder going and not letting the hips and feet go with the shot. Um, another issue with that as well is range, right? If he doesn't rotate the core, the, the, the punch lands right here. So I'd have to be here for it to land, right? Now if I step away, if he doesn't fully rotate, he's gonna fall short, it's not gonna land, right? But if he just rotates the foot and core, boom, now he can land it. So it's getting that extra range as well. It doesn't have to be as close to land that shot. So an extra benefit there to rotate in the core as well. It just gives you that extra few inches of range on the shot too. All right, so core rotation number one. All right, so how do we fix that and encourage our boxers to, to get that core rotation going? So the way I like to coach it with my boxers, I tell them to think about the foot, the hip, and the shoulder, and the glove, the fist, the whole right side of the body for orthodox boxers, left side if it's a southpaw, but that whole right side of the body from the ground up to the shoulder as one unit. As soon as the boxer starts to think of everything, the full body as one unit, you're way more likely to get the foot, the hip, the shoulder all, all going through and getting that core rotation that you want. So uh, this time, Mark, when you throw the cross, I want you to think about using your foot, your hip, and your shoulder all as one unit. Let it all swivel together. Ready? Go. Good. Again. Nice. Good. So that's the way I like to coach it and get them to start thinking about that core rotation. Alright, so there we have it. Common mistake with the cross. Number one, not enough core rotation. And then a little tip right there of how you can start to make that happen with your box. Common mistake number two is getting the elbow too involved, right? The elbow needs to follow the fist. So the elbow needs to come away from the rib cage but stay in the width of the body. So now from this angle, the elbow is gonna come forward towards me and follow that fist, right? It's not gonna, it's gonna stay inside the width of his body, go back. Now, if he lifts it, he's lifting the elbow first and it's coming away from the body, it's getting outside of the width of the body. So I wanna encourage him to keep that elbow inside the width of his body and land it right there, right? So that's what we're focusing on here, not lifting the elbow. So why is it bad to lift the elbow? Couple of reasons. In the first uh, common mistake, I talked about range, right? If we don't rotate the core, we're gonna fall short. The same goes with this too. If he lifts the elbow, the range of the punch is gonna be about here. It's kind of like a half punch, right? So I would have to be here. So if he lets the elbow come forward, boom, I, it's got way more length and range on that shot. Now, if we were in close and he wants to throw that short overhand right, yeah, then, then we would lift the elbow but that's a totally separate thing to be working on. Right now we're focusing on fundamentals and drilling that, that, that cross with maximum power. Uh, the second uh, common issue with this is um, you can see it's telegraphing the punch. It's giving me a signal that that punch is coming. The minute that he lifts that elbow, I'm alert. I can see it coming. If he doesn't lift the elbow and he just drives the shoulder and hip, boom, it's way harder for me to see that punch coming. Bang, it's probably gonna land, right? So it's really try and keep that elbow in. So another issue with that elbow being lifted, if it's a short punch, right, it, it's a lot weaker of a punch. Watch this. So if his arm is in that position, right, now tighten up your fist, try and make yourself as solid as you can. It's easy for me to push, it's easy. Like the body's not solid, right? Now if you fully extend elbow through rather than up, way more solid, right? He's on balance. Every shoulder's locked, core's tight, legs are on. The whole body's behind that punch. It's way stronger of a punch. Now, I make this point because it reminds me of a, a classic British fight between Ricky Hatton and Costizu. And Ricky Hatton's strategy going into that fight, Costizu was a huge puncher and pound for pound, probably the, on the pound for pound list at that time. His strategy going into that fight was to stay close like this. So he wasn't at the end of that long, powerful right hand, right, where it had maximum power. His, his whole strategy was to be here on his chest to make that right hand, even if it landed, short, right? So it's half the power, half the, the, um, 
the impact. So that was his whole strategy going into that fight, and it worked because even though he ate some of those right hands, they didn't have the same sting as if they were fully extended where he would be out here. So just a, a reminder there of how that elbow lift can actually weaken the punch as well. All right, so there's um, two issues with sh uh, that elbow lift, right? And now I'm going to show you a, a drill of how we can fix that on the mix. All right, so how do we fix this, right? One, one way I like to fix this is I try and hold the mitt right here, just, just outside the width of the body, and I'll cue him to not touch that mitt when he throws the cross, right? So I'm gonna hold this right here, just throw your cross, and try not to let your elbow touch my mitt. Good again, good again, good. Now it can come out a little bit, right? So it's not, I'm not holding it right close to the elbow where he's kind of pushing things forward like this. Just giving him a general feeling that I don't want him to come into this area right here, right? Again, again, again. Nice, good. So that's one drill right there that's usually pretty effective. And you can drill that on the mitts, you can use that on the heavy bags as well. Uh, watch out for it in, in your boxes, shadow boxing. And think about that too if you're practicing your cross as well and you tend to find yourself doing this with your shots, especially on the heavy bag when you've not got a coach for you, you tend to see that elbow lift quite a bit. So try and keep those elbows down, let the elbows follow the fists, all right? So there's common mistake number two and a quick drill of how we can try and fix that elbow lift with the cross. All right, guys, so number three, the third common mistake we see in the gym with the cross, probably the most common one we see. And before I get to it, I just want to remind you, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification. That way you'll get notified each week of these new videos coming out, all right? So the third common mistake I see is accuracy. The punch just simply not being accurate. If I'm holding my ground right here, I want the fist to land right in the middle of that mitt. I want that punch to land right in the middle of the mitt right here. I want the two front knuckles right in the middle of the mitt, right on that skull, right? That's the most accurate cross that I want to get out of my boxer. Common mistakes we see with this is going too far across. And coaches, you don't want to do your boxers any favor. You stand your ground. So if I'm holding the mitt right here and you feel like the punch is catching the edges, edge right here, they're punching across. They're not going down the line of the target. They're going across like this. So it's going to catch the outside and it's going to put flexion and torque on those wrists, which we don't want over time, right? So I encourage your boxer to hit the middle of the target. If you do feel like they're catching the edge, cue them to correct that straight away. So common mistake, going across the punch. So go across the punch, see, catching the edge of the mitt. Catching the edge of the mitt, right? Catch the middle, punch, straight down the line, right? That's what we want, want the impact. And then the same thing goes for, for going up too high as well, like catching the top of the mitt. We talked about hitting the side and going across. Common mistake is going up as well, not accurate, right? We want it in the middle. You'll see boxes going up like that and catching the, the top of the mitt. Now that's gonna put flexion on the wrist as well. Now, if you overcorrect this and you still meet that punch by going up and meeting your boxer up there, throw it up, and I'm going up every time, again, I'm going up, yep, I'm giving him a good, a good solid impact and it feels good for him, but over, over a period of time, that's not doing them any favors, it's not correcting their form and technique, and you're having to do more work than necessary as the coach as well, so stand your ground, stay right here, and if they're still catching the top, cue them to bring that punch down a little bit. Now, if they were training to fight a taller opponent, they can punch up all day, right? But that's not what we're talking about. We're trying to drill correct fundamentals here. So shoulder height, head height is what we want. We're going to be driving through that, that pad, okay? So that's a couple of examples of what we'll see with the accuracy is catching the outside and going across and going up. Now, what's, what's the big issue with that? Why is that bad? So if he goes across the punch, right? He's not had a good solid impact, number one. And number two, all that weight's gone onto his left side, it's gonna pull him off balance. So go, go too wide and hold it, right? Too much weight's gone onto that front foot, he's off balance. Now, easy to just push him off balance. Not good, right? You can't set up any more punches, that's the last thing that we want. We wanna be nicely on balance and solid to be able to do anything from there. Boxing is all about being on balance. So if he throws it straight down the line, right, hold it. If he throws it straight down the line like that, way harder to push him off balance. Yeah, the weight still come through to the front leg, but it's solid, right? He's about 60% on that front leg. His abs are tight, his shoulders behind the punch. It's harder to, to push that back, right? Um, so yeah, just accuracy, going up, going across, uh, and, and even going down as well. Like you'll see, sometimes they'll catch the bottom of the mitt right here and start punching your forearms. Again, not good for us as coaches, and it's just dipping the shot, which is not what we want. So again, just getting your boxer to elevate that, punch above that pad, through the pad right there, boom. So you can give them that little visual cue to make sure they don't go down as well. Without the accuracy of the punch, there's no balance, there's no technique, there's no power, 
nothing. So accuracy is everything. So hopefully you got something out of that. You can try and correct these in your sessions. Try and fix them on the heavy bike. Think about the cues. So just a quick recap, no core rotation. So not rotating the core. The way we do that is encourage our boxers to use the whole uh, back side of the body the, from, the, from the ground up. Feet, hips, shoulders, all rotating as one unit right through the punch. The second one, not lifting the elbow. Again, we can correct that by just giving them that visual cue and let the elbow follow the punch. Right through it again. There, good. And uh, encouraging your boxer to land those two knuckles right in the middle of the pad right there. Turn, 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 good. And let your boxer do the work, right? We're not meeting those punches and smothering it, okay? So three common mistakes with the cross. Hopefully that helps you develop a better cross. Try these out, leave your feedback in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. What are common mistakes that you see on the cross? Let me know.